Okay, I have a really interesting impact weapon to cover this time. It doesn't look like it, does it? <laughs> but uh, stay with me. So, looks like a billet club, right? A relatively short one. But that's not what it is. It could certainly be used that way, and was. But in fighting terms, it could be used another way, because of this. Got a surprise, right? Yeah, got a basically a giant wooden spike. And this is a tool that could be used, and was used, as a weapon. This is a sailor's tool called a fid. Now, a fid's primary purpose was to untie knots. You're a sailor, you're in the old days, all kinds of rope, especially some really big, thick ones, so this is going to be a very handy instrument, right? You drive that point into the gaps in a knot and then use it to loosen it. But, as you can imagine, it could also come in handy in a scrap. They came in different sizes, and this is on the, on the large end for sure, so thereby is that much more useful as a billy club. Sailors had an entire array of improvised or semi-improvised weapons, like the slungshot, of course. And this is one of them. So, talked about how big this one was. <laughs> and there's a flat sap in comparison. So, clearly, you're not going to carry this around to surprise anybody with it. But you don't have to, because it's a tool that you're carrying around on the ship. And you can just see how fearsome it looks, right? Just right off the bat. It might as well have been designed as a weapon, as far as, like, psychologically, the effect it's going to have on an opponent. And what's really interesting is, of course, it can be used from either end. Let's see if I can get this guy to stay still. And we'll talk about that more in a sec. But first, these were made of wood, obviously. And uh, kind of exotic, really resilient woods were more prized. So teak, that kind of thing, tropical woods, because they were more uh, able to stand up to the uh, constant kind of you know water and humidity that you're going to find on a ship. I don't know what kind of wood this one is, but I love the look of it. It's got almost that purplish tint. Uh, it was sold as mahogany, I have no idea if that's what it is or not, but I just love the look of the grain anyway. Really hard to tell the age on something like this in particular, but here's the spike. You'll notice it's not truly sharp, and that makes sense. This is a tool, and if it was really truly sharp, uh, it'd be just that much easier to break in daily use, and that's not going to help you. And it doesn't have to be, because it's not for piercing anything, right? It just That point has to fit into the gap somewhere in a rope, and then you kind of drill in further. Now, I talked about how this one is a, a pretty large example, and because of that, you have this, in terms of an impact weapon, you have this very useful side over here, this end. This is like pure billy club size, could absolutely be used that way. And from what I've read, that's mostly how they were used, but you know, this thing keeps tapering, and uh, I just can't imagine that people didn't realize you could kind of go all stabby-stabby with this end over here, and I would think in those brawls, it absolutely got used that way as well. Speaking of hands-on work, let's get to it. So here we go. Again, big size, and the center of gravity is going to be way over there, right? So it's interesting. If I'm grabbing it there, that's the center, and again, stabby-stabby, but from what I read, people get conked with it, so you'd grab it more there. So I can do my figure eight, whatever I want, swing up, but got some interesting options here. Bounce off the strike and go straight into a thrust. That'd be a very unique one-two combination that you could do with this weapon. You can do a reinforced thrust like that. I know it doesn't look like the most natural hand movement, but it, it really is. You could use that, actually. I like how you can just drop it right there, like gravity assists you, and now it's in the stabbing position, but you can also punch. So you can thrust like that. You can use it like a fist load and just punch normally, and that's absolutely going to add. You can also kind of hide it along your forearm or use it defensively that way, a little bit like a tonfa. But this is the most unique thing here, right? Got a big wooden spike. It's no longer an impact weapon on that side, but you can thrust from all these different angles, as I'm showing, and you can still punch for impact or hammer fist, which would be pretty devastating. So it's not your typical baton at all. It's fun to play with because of that. Now here's a 10 or 15 times magnification. I can't remember which. I just thought it was kind of cool. Uh, you can see, actually, I, I would assume what are leftover, you know, rope fibers stuck right there on that point. And then here's a close-up on what would normally be, I mean, at least from what I could tell, the business end. The more typical use is as a club. And it's funny, you'd see instances of uh, a captain ordering someone on the ship to knock someone else out with a spike. Well, if you didn't know what this was, you'd be pretty confused by that. Like, how do you knock someone out with a spike? The answer is because it was actually one of these, a fid. An additional side note is that those exotic woods I talked about before were sometimes extra dense, like much more so than typical wood. So, makes an even better weapon for that reason. That's the fid, a cool piece of sailor lore, improvised weapon history, and just a fun thing to play with. Thanks.